offense. He's certainly capable. Ball was knocked away from behind. West trying to go in a low block. They haven't gotten the ball a lot to West in this surge because most of it has been turnovers and layups. Not a lot of half-court work for the All-Americans so far in the second half. Bernanke picked up the foul, his second. And a timeout in Dallas. Oh, he called bank. It's great to see coaches after timeout so they know what they want. It's getting the players to do it trip after trip after trip. Bruce Fran, what a miraculous job he's done down there in Philadelphia at Penn. 13th year at Penn. All-time leader in wins. First one is good. Well, Bill Lyon, longtime columnist for the Philadelphia Inquirer, and I think one of the better columnists in the country, mm -hmm. paid a great tribute to Fran Dunphy in a column a couple of days ago, calling him uh, one of the classiest men in the coaching fraternity. Well, I would agree with that. Of course, an old friend of mine and teammate, Tony Abbott, was involved with him as a player. Tony was an assistant at LaSalle and spoke in such high praise of Fran Dunphy, and of course, uh, it turned out to be true. And the coach at LaSalle back then, Judy Moore was my coach, one of the greats, particularly in Pittsburgh. He was it in Pittsburgh at Duquesne. Of course, then he had me for a couple of years, <laughs> and uh, he had to carry his own bags at the airport. <laughs> oh, rejection comes in many forms. <laughs> Four minutes to go in this one. 65-59. Great front on Samson. I mean, you can see how tough this club is defensively. And in California, just so patient and Andrew we'll pass, ball kick ball. out, forehand Kelly, well conceived. And here's Archibong, and six there. point game, 3.40 to go. Jeff Schiffner, now Onekwe, there's a beautiful entry pass, but tipped away by forehand Kelly. May have been a little tough. That was tough, and you're right about Kelly, just in the right spot to get a piece. Dante Lakers just did a Carol Burnett. Reached up and grabbed his right ear. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to Singular at the Half here in New York. I'm Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. And our score at halftime, Illinois leading San Diego State by a score of 40 to 25. Bill Self looking for the real Illinois team is looking that way now. And when Frank Williams plays like he's playing 14 points, six, a few assists as well, Illinois 7 of 16 threes dominating the glass. Frank Williams is the catalyst for this team. He had a terrific tournament last year, 21 points a game. He's playing at that level so far in this game today. All right, Clark, in Washington, UConn seems to have had its way earlier today with Hampton, but the Pirates just will not leave the Huskies alone. 67, 59, eight and a half to play. Let's go to Jim Nance and Billy Packer. UConn leading here, 67, 59, with 8.20 to go. Huskies with the ball. Stolen away by the Pirates. Down the lane for two is David Johnson. Well, Okafar is the man that the ball was stolen from, so he wasn't in a position to be there to stop Johnson on the putaway. Down to six. Donald Didlick has just come in for Hampton, number three. Manning the ball here. Huskies led in that first half by 15 at one time. But Hampton has gained momentum here in the second half. No place for Brown to go. He's got to get Butler in the offense. Going down the wire, put it in the hands of your best player. Hairston. Nice. Gives it up and dunk time for David Johnson. And Calhoun will take a timeout now, and he will say to Brown and other people, let's see what Butler can do with the ball for a while. And the Pirates do it for a second straight year as a 15. They're back in it here in Washington, down four. Defensive intensity by Xavier. Martin thought about it, pulls it back into Savovich. Under 10 left, field drive. I think the foul's before. No basket. Reason to celebrate for the moment. Their team up by six with 3.06 to go. Time now for the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Field goal percentage, California at an even 50%. 10, 10 percentage points below that. You get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online under keyword CBS Sports Line. 11 seconds remaining on the shot clock. And Cal will inbound. Brian Weathers. 
Nice trap. trap. How about this thing? And could not control the pass at the 8.58 mark. First half, big time. Big Second time. half, small time. Not getting a lot of shots. You know, I saw him when he walked by us to start the second half. He looked back at one of the trainers, and he was still stretching his right hand. We saw him last night in that Tulsa game. They said he sprained or pulled apart the, the little finger and the ring finger on the right hand. And it seems like, you know, he was having some problems with it. Didn't hurt him in the first half, however. No, and, but yesterday, you're right, he had a pad on there. He's not playing with a pad today. 67-63, Connecticut, the two seed in the East, leading by four over Hampton, which last year knocked out the two in Iowa State. Out in Boise, Idaho. And Jim, this crowd definitely behind Hampton right now, and I'm sure in that timeout, Jim Calhoun instructed his team, I want to see Butler touch the ball on this sequence. Okafor with the basket. They have great hands. Good presence, too. Over for 12 points, 13 rebounds, and five blocks. Kind of surprised right now that Adams is not on the floor. It's a very important time for his team to make sure they get some good shots. Harrison. Pretty nice piece of dribbling right there, but doesn't hit it. They've got to get Adams back in the game. And off the bench is Adams. We'll be checking in. Six and a half to play. Six point margin for UConn. Yeah, there's no time now to worry about being tired. 6.25 to go. You're Hampton. You have to have your best scores in that ball game. Gordon and out it comes Jefferson with the ball. Did late. Timeout called. That's a good timing on that jump by Harrison. So as they take a break in Washington, the Huskies have extended their lead now to 69 to 63, coming up on six minutes to play in the second half. In Pittsburgh, Penn and California have 2.15 to play in regulation. The Golden Bears a nine-point lead. Let's take you there live. Vern Lundquist and Bill Rafter. 2.15 remaining. And a nine-point game. Begley just picks up his fifth foul. He's looking around. He can't believe he got that little small changer on him. He never got into the swing with the foul difficulties, and he's such a good provider for this team. You know, deep shooting, 41%, around seven points, can get you doubles when you need it. And Fran's description of him, a very good basketball player. Well, he'll watch the final 215 from the bench. Quakers down by eight at halftime to Cal. They got it to within five, actually got it to within four, and uh, have hung around, but we just had a, a deadly three-point shot from Joe Ship from way outside. On well, the giveaway at half court, it would have been a layup. And that stops the clock with 2.10 to go in this one. That's only the fifth team foul, so non-shooting, and Brian Weathers will take it out of bounds. He and Joe Ship, 17 points apiece. What bookends, huh? So California's lead 70 to 61 as they approach two minutes to play in Pittsburgh. In Dallas, Hawaii and Xavier are uh, under seven minutes to play in the game, and the Musketeers lead at 54 to 45. The game of the tournament so far took place in Chicago earlier today. Double overtime. The Blue Jays over Florida. Tim Brando picks and awaits the, the winner of San Diego State against Illinois. I want to remind you, coming your way here on CBS this evening, 7.30 Eastern time approximately, you'll see St. John's against Wisconsin. Cincinnati will also be in action, the top seed in the West. Texas Tech against Southern Illinois, McNeese State against Mississippi State. We thank you for joining us on Singular at the Half. We'll send you back to Chicago for the second half of San Diego State and Illinois after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Sunday afternoon. Well, they will have some fans against them. Yes. Come on Sunday. You know, that's the fun of winning. Just move on to the next one. Nice Saturday with the weather out here, gorgeous. 
because they'll be spending a few hours in the gym and in tape room. Leggins at the line. Shoots one more. His first free throws. He had that concussion early in the year, and uh, he missed one game. And they said he was uncontrollable, anticipating getting back in. I think it was that Matt Barnes uh, game against UCLA. Mm -hmm. He was hit. Well, he's the lifeblood of this team. A lot of juice. 90 seconds to go. Archibong. Pretty. Yes, it was. Timeout called by the Quakers. You sense here that UConn is at this point what mindset wise I, I think they're trying to sit on it slow this game down let this clock go by and I don't know if that's a good idea with this club right out there being a poor free throw shooting team which Connecticut is Huskies with the six point lead and possession particularly when you take consideration Jim Hampton with some excellent three point shooters on the floor there's a steal from behind Sometimes you get to be too patient. Adams up ahead to Purvis. Is Adams quick with that first step or not? Well, he's some player. Conference player of the year. He His was senior a year. High school soccer star. Tough shot, Green. Again, that's the wrong idea if you're Hampton. Butler over to Selby, and the reverse layup for the eight-point lead. That's good, Selby coming in right to left. He was able to use his left hand on that play. Outside foul called against the Huskies. CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Three point field goals in this half. Hampton getting back into it with that. Get complete tournament coverage. CBS.sportsline.com. America Online. Keyword CBS Sports Line. Hampton inbounding. Down eight. Adams short that time Tough and shot Huskies selfie clears it a lot more time on the clock than Hampton's giving itself taking some bad shots the last two times down the floor and look at what Jim Calhoun saying I want to go one four they haven't really utilized Butler at all in the last uh, five or six minutes of this game where he's stepping out Ooh, oh that wasn't ready for it Jefferson tough pass he threaded it to Adams and it's down to six Jim, I really think that Connecticut is putting this in the freeze much too early. Sleepwalking. They effect. really are. They, they have lost their aggressive nature. And this crowd's coming to life again. But there's so much time left on the clock. Talik Brown drives. Too strong. Tipped around. It comes out the Wide top. Wide open. He's got Adams down the court. Adams cuts it to four. I really don't see what Connecticut's trying to accomplish here other than put themselves in some very precarious position. Timeout, Connecticut. Hawaii slow to the basketball. Eight points for Fry, 10 point lead for Xavier. The three, short. Fry follows the missed shot. Short equates to tired legs. End game situations, guys hit the front of the rim, you know their legs are feeling it. You know, when Xavier, looking back at this game, win or lose, it's a little bit of everything. They've had eight from Chalmers. Sato's had a big game for 18. Alvin Brown with eight this half. Fry's had his moments. David West has not had the great game, but yet it's still chipped in a dozen. There's a timeout in Dallas. Ten-point game. She went to school in Madison. David Johnson hoisting Murfeld off the court. Only the fourth time a 15's ever beaten a two in the history of the tournament. This Hampton Butch, the first 15 to beat a two that comes back to the tournament the next year. And a hand check call against the Pirates. Wow. Jim, those others that, that uh, 15's that won. Richmond back in 91, Santa Clara 93, Coppin State in 97. That was Richmond over Syracuse. But I think Santa Clara over Arizona and Coppin State over South Carolina. Right, that was Eddie Fogler's club at South Carolina that 
and had such a great year that year, particularly against Kentucky. One and one to Leek Brown with the lead at four. That was one of the first touch fouls that we've seen in this ball game. Sixty-two percent free throw shooter. Never know it by those two. Nope. And a timeout on the court for Lee Brown. Up to the test, knocks down two free throws. The lead is six for the Huskies. Bridge of the road to the Final Four continues tonight on CBS. In the East, St. John's takes on Wisconsin. The tip time is 740. Here in Pittsburgh, we've got Boston University. The Terriers against the top-seeded Cincinnati Bearcats. Southern Illinois against Texas Tech. And the rest of the lineup. And another foul. They very, you know, I think they call it timeout. Oh, timeout. The trap in the corner, uh, Philadelphia, St. Joseph, Jack Ramsey. Maybe the innovator in that aspect. Hawaii trails Xavier by 10, and the Rainbows, Bob, have not seen the islands since the 26th of February. That's a lot of miles, 4,317, 17 days on the road, laptop, computers, professors, sports psychologists. They need him right now in that huddle because they got to get their minds right if they're going to overcome here in the end. Four and one during that stretch. And the clock now becoming the enemy for Hawaii. Two guys, Alvin Brown and Keith Jackson, have provided a great deal of defense and pressure-wise for Xavier in this game, and that's got them the lead. They are out of the game right now. Thad trying to go back with his normal starting lineup while he has the lead. Well, the seven-point lead at half melted away. They've produced only eight points in this second half of play. A 25-8 run by Xavier. Two fifty two left here in Dallas game two of the day. Xavier the seventh seed against the 10 seed. And they have rallied back to take a 10 point lead and the clock now running in their favor. Down seven and a half Xavier decided to come out and go all out pressure. And it's been extremely Xavier. effective. Timeout called by Thad Mata. Quick timeout in Dallas, and we'll be right back. 2.32 left. They have to change his lineup because he's got three foul shooters on the floor right now. Johnny Selvey, 58%. Brown is at 62%, and Okafor at 62%. Tommy Adams in the lane, goes back out. Why didn't Green stay outside where he belonged? Adams, three-point shot. shot. Johnson tries to save it. Oh, I don't know why he tried to save it. I think that Okafor touched that ball last. I think you're right. If you noticed on that ball, yes, I think Okafor touched it last. Good call by the official. But on that last play, on the penetration, and here we see Hampton taking another timeout. Green went inside. If he had just stayed outside, he had a wide open three opportunity. UConn led by 15 at one point in the first half, 11 at the intermission, and now it's six, half the ball. The margin of difference is now nine. The ball down. The right guy shooting. McIntyre with his third three, nine points. Now they're trying to put a little uh, backcourt pressure on Xavier. Coming up on two minutes, seven point game. West back in. Takes a foul from English. Trying to stop the clock with just under two. Could become a free throw shooting contest. I don't think Riley Wallace wanted the foul that early. Especially David West. He's 77% from the line. Pretty good. But they got to trade threes for twos now. They're still in it. Everything is still possible. Adams trying to find a way to shock the world again and extend his college career. Short on the jumper. Nice defense that time by Brown. There was a clear out on the side. He really did a good job on Adams. Jim Calhoun content to say we're going to pull it out. And I'm not so sure it wouldn't be a good idea to go out and get the ball out of Brown's hands if you're Hampton. Make him make a play and then try to foul Okafor Selby. 
Try to get them in on that foul line. Adams. Come six six seconds to screen. go, Jim. Yeah. Six seconds on the shot clock. Jimmy Calhoun's never lost a first round game in the NCAA tournament. He's 9 0 all time, first round. Brown with four on the shot clock. Selby with the rebound underneath. Huge rebound. Johnny Selby, who's really been the man for this team today, when everybody was kind of in a sleepwalk after they got off to a good lead early. Connecticut well, has done just enough to be in the lead in this game. Selby with a double-double, 12 points, 10 rebounds. Purvis, tough shot, three, forced. Now Hampton is really forcing shots right now. Good job by Connecticut on that defensive set. Here they are. Here they're going to come out and press a little bit. Good idea. This Cal team and the bodies too. I mean, they've got some frames, whether it's tall or long, and sometimes both. Weathers gets one. Do you see? An advantage, Cal or Pittsburgh? Inside Cal. Okay. Uh, I, I think they just have guys that can put you away. Uh, they know how to lock low. And I don't think Ben was happy with his inside play today, so that's something that they'll have to work on. But uh, then you counter that with Brandon Knight's ability to disrupt defensively. Right. To control the. They are trips. That'll do game. Butler. Ducks for the 10 point lead. Hampton really got out of what they wanted to do on the offensive end of the floor for the last two minutes of this game. For the last three trips, they had three forces. Well, Coach Murfeld, who has had a number of technicals this year, looking to try to get another one. Two gets called for the foul. And so we'll go back to the free throw line with West. The three point shooting has been absent for Hawaii in the second half. One minute. A minute left. Sabovich buries the three. At any point in time, he can knock it in. He's been invisible in the second half until the last 30 seconds when he's made two threes. This one off a screen. From long range, Sabovich. Ten. Too tall on the luck, and what turnovers do? A little Pepto can't cure. 82 75, seven seconds remaining. And they're just going to let it play out now. Cal wins it. They're up by eight at the half. They win it by seven. And advance to meet Pittsburgh on Sunday afternoon. Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Yugana Onyekwe for Penn, 16 points and five rebounds. And Joe Schiff for Cal, 20 points, four rebounds. He was five of eight from the field. The storm, Penn fought back and uh, got to within four at one point, but they wind up losing by seven. Right now, Back to our New York studios. Here's Greg. All right, Vern, thank you. So the number six Golden Bears move on. The Penn Quakers are finished for the season, 82-75. Let's take you now to Dallas, Texas. First round in the West, Hawaii. Second half performance today than what we saw in the first half. So it should be quite a, quite a matchup. Remaining in Dallas, second half of Hawaii and Xavier. And two free throws for Chalmers, four for four, perfect from the free throw line. 63-56, the seventh seed over the tenth seed. A remarkable turnaround from the first to the second half. Hawaii scores 40 points in the first half, and Xavier at halftime, Fat Matta gives his team a tongue lashing, I'm sure, and they come out and pressure the ball in every pass, and not until the last moments has Hawaii been able to get any kind of backdoor action at all. It's been a 30-16 run in this half. 
48 seconds and change. Savovich, who had 16 in that first half. And now you see him right there trying to shake off that sprain in the right hand. He sprained it against Tulsa and had a pad on yesterday in practice. Didn't bother him in the first half. He had 16. Huskies have now won 10 straight games. Calhoun is 10 and 0 all time in the first round. And the Chevy MVPs, Tommy Adams, closing out a wonderful career at Hampton, 23 points. Okafer for UConn, the Chevy MVP. So UConn and North Carolina State advanced this afternoon from this site. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Jim, thank you. The Huskies move on. The Hampton Pirates go home. 78-67 is the final. Meanwhile, in Dallas, Hawaii and Xavier winding the clock down. Let's join Craig Bowlerjack and Bob Wenzel. Xavier trying to advance to round two and a whistle on the drive by Alvin Brown. Xavier with a 63-58 lead with 39 seconds remaining. Well, Brown goes to the free throw line where he's 73%, and with the lead, he should feel confident. First free throws of the day for Brown. Alvin Brown, nine points. Bob, all here in the second half of play. Well, he and Keith Jackson came in and gave high energy to the defense of the Musketeers. They were down big at halftime. Hawaii got everything they wanted in the first half, and in the second half, virtually nothing. Two big free throws. Brown with a 10-point game. Keith Jackson, Keith Jackson will check back in for Xavier. Both Brown and Jackson, spark plugs at the defensive end. Very valuable in this game. Savovich pops three. He wants the three, gives it off to English. Fires and over the backboard. Substitution for Xavier and Alvin Brown will check back in. Well, the reason he's putting Brown and Jackson back and forth is Brown is a much better free throw shooter than Jackson, so at the offensive end, he wants him in in case he gets fouled. Reaching over the back for another foul, McIntyre. Well, Oklahoma already advancing in the first game of the day, beat Illinois oh, Chicago God. Bob 71 to 63. The Sooners now 28 and four, and they will play the winner of Xavier Hawaii. And that will be a great matchup inside. Aaron McGee probably will be doing battle with David West and Hollis Price will be trying to guard Chalmers. Excellent defensive team is Oklahoma. McGee had a huge game for Oklahoma, 26 and 12 for the Sooners. Chalmers missed the first, he'll get another. So 11 for Lionel Chalmers, 66-58. The offense-defense substitution again, Jackson back in for his defensive prowess. This has been a very entertaining and unusual game we've seen here today with this one. Well, Hawaii so much in control that first half. Savovich hit the deck on a wild three. West has it. And the final seconds ticking down. And a foul at midcourt. Whistled on English. Well, Riley Wallace, 15 years at Hawaii. Looks like he's going to go down in this one. And Xavier, the Musketeers, happy first-year coach. Thad Mata doing a great job in his first season there. Wins the conference tournament championship. He's happy. The Atlantic 10 with only one team in the field this year. A little unusual. Temple normally in there. Thad Mata, formerly of Butler, took them and to the NCAA last year as well. He's a young head coach, Bob, just 34 years of age. And he rips off his uh, tw a 26 and 5 season in his first year with Xavier. Xavier has had some outstanding coaches coach there and leave and take their careers elsewhere and also stay there. And he is among the line. Pete Gillen now at Virginia and Skip Prosser now at Wake Forest. Shimonovich said about ending his day that way. Same with Mark Campbell, only a junior. He will be back as will Riley Wallace, of course. It's been a great year for the Rainbow Warriors. 
Fry at the free throw line. He's played strong minutes. Throws down his ninth point out of Chicago, Illinois. He's been uh, just a blue collar guy for this uh, program. School record today, 129th game as a Musketeer. Unbelievable. That's a long time being in that place and doing a good job. You think about the brackets and Xavier in Oklahoma, what a terrific matchup it's going to be. Coaches uh, emptying the bench, letting some players uh, get a chance to get just, just a taste of what it feels like to play in the big, the big dance, Bob. That's exactly right. Those guys work all the time in practice. Now they get their opportunity to be in the game in the NCAA tournament. Final seconds. The shot by English off the iron, and that's it. Xavier advances. They will take on Oklahoma on Sunday here in Dallas. 70 to 58, the final. Incredible second half by Xavier. Well, the West bracket looks like Western teams other than Xavier, Oklahoma, Wyoming, and Arizona. A two and a three advancing. So the top two teams in this part of the bracket holding serve. Well, the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Savovich for Hawaii, 26 points, four boards. He was 10 of 21 from the floor. Romain Sato, 18 points, nine boards, and shot six of 13. And had great, great defense. The final again, 70 to 58. Greg Gumble will be right along after this break here on CBS. Goodbye from Dallas. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our studios here in New York. Along with Clark Kellogg, I'm Greg Gumbel. It has been a heck of a day so far, this day two of the NCAA tournament. Let's run down scores and highlights for you as we have them. The Musketeers of Xavier have moved on, dispatching the 10th seed in the West, Hawaii, by a score of 70 to 58. Hawaii's Carl English with the drive. Oh, look at the nice fake and lays it up. And Rainbow Warriors lead 29-22. But they got clamped down on in the second half. Here you see Lionel Chalmers with the steal and the throwdown. Xavier by five and then Alvin Brown going to get the rebound off the miss put it back for two increasing the Musketeers lead to seven they held Hawaii to 18 second half points Greg. and Xavier ran off a 21 5 run to start the second half they ride that to victory 70 to 58 and the Musketeers in the next round will play Oklahoma because the Sooners knocked off Illinois Chicago today 71 63 the final score watch a nice pass inside from Abiera to Darian Selby, and the Sooners lead by 13 early on. The man of the game, Aaron McGee. Quanis White going to find him. McGee had 26 points and 12 boards to lead the Sooners. And the Sooners win at 71-63, so on Sunday, it'll be Oklahoma and Xavier. Meanwhile, in Chicago today, Illinois is leading San Diego State. 11-18 to play in the second half. Take a look. San Diego State's Al Fox with a long three, and the Illini lead it down to two. But Illinois made seven threes in the first half, one of them from Luther Head right there. 13-point lead for the Illini. It will go to 18 as Frank Williams with the steal and the throwdown. And the Illini looking to improve to 25-8 and eight and move on to play on Sunday. The Creighton Blue Jays. Creighton in double overtime in the first game of the day in Chicago. Beat the Florida Gators by a score of 83 to 82. Terrell Taylor, what a day he had, especially after halftime. All 28 of his points, he hits a game time three at 69 here. Late in the first, at the end of the first overtime, Taylor trying to win it. The shot doesn't go. The tip in is too late. We go to overtime two. In the OT, Florida's Udonis Haslam gets it down low for the lay-in. Florida's lead is three. It stayed at three as Matt Bonner going to cut inside, get the hoop and the foul. It looked like Florida was in excellent shape. It's now a two-point lead, and that's when Terrell Taylor went to work. The three with .2 seconds remaining in double overtime to give Creighton the lead, 83-82, and Haslam gets the long inbound pass. Not enough time for the Gators to get a shot off. Florida, the number five seed in the Midwest, goes home. Creighton advances 83-82, and after the game, Florida head coach Billy Donovan had a gripe about the way the game finished. I thought there was stoppage of play because what happened was by them running on the floor, the reason I felt it should have been a technical foul, I thought that we could have taken the basketball out and thrown the ball along. And, you know, obviously we had to tip it in, but their defense wasn't set. 
and for them to stop play and then to allow Creighton to regroup its defense, that's where I thought it was unfair. The officials make a comment to me, and, and this is one thing I don't like, um, and, and, and I, I don't believe it happened. Uh, he said that all, the only players that were running on the floor were guys that were in the game, and that's not true. You know what? Judging by the pictures, it isn't true. There were some players off the bench and onto the court. Yeah, but the clock showed .2 seconds even as that ball was going through the basket, so there wouldn't have been enough time even if they hadn't jumped on the floor for Florida to throw the ball inbound and still catch it and shoot. But if players come onto the court, is that a technical foul? Um, no, I don't think it is. In that situation, certainly the game was decided by the made basket. Okay. So I don't think that's a technical foul. Do you think we've heard the last of this? No, probably not. <laughs> I'll take a time out and we'll continue with more from New York right after this. Continuing down the scoreboard in the South in Pittsburgh today, California over Penn, 82-75 the final score. Cal Shante Leggins feeds Solomon Hughes with the alley-oop, and the Bears were up two. And Shante going to get three for himself this time in transition. The long-distance triple. Cal's Amit Tamir finds Weathers underneath for the layup. Bears by six, and then the steal by A.J. Diggs to end the half. California was up 8, 40 to 32. And then the Bears on the break, A.J. Diggs to Joe Ship for the slam dunk. Golden Bears led 56 to 43. They won it 82 to 75, and California will now advance in Pittsburgh to play the Pitt Panthers, the number three seed in the South. The Panthers knocked off Central Connecticut take 71-54. Pitt's Brandon Knight looked very good today, using the screen, hits the three, and the Panthers led 14-11. And it's Donatus Zavatskis. Able to get inside, lays it up and in. And then Brandon Knight leaves it for Javon Troutman. 10 point lead for the Panthers. What a day Knight had. 17 points, nine assists, and one of his five steals here takes it in for the bucket and the foul. And the Panthers hit cruise control 71 54 over the Blue Devils of Central Connecticut State. In Washington, Hampton falls to the number two seed in the East, the Connecticut Huskies 78 67. Talik Brown to Karan Butler. Nice reverse, and the Huskies were up 23 17. Amika Okafor with a double double and five denials. One of them right there is David Young tried to take it right through him. And Barry Harrison, nice spin move. David Johnson for the throw down. UConn was challenged, but the miss three going to be rebounded by Johnny Selby. And he takes it right back to the rim. And then the easiest of baskets, Karan Butler all alone. Nice, easy jam. And the Huskies win it by a score of 78-67. They advance to the action on Sunday after the game. Our Bonnie Bernstein with Coach Jim Calhoun and Amika Okafor. All right, Greg. Ten NCAA tournament appearances for Jim Calhoun. Never has he lost a first-round game. What was impressive, Jim, you had five players scoring double figures. How did some of the other players step up, step up when Karan Butler struggled in the second half? Exactly. You know, they put a triangle two on Karan, and, and he struggled, but Karan actually dished the ball well, and Ameka finished, Johnny finished, Ben, et cetera. And, and I just think the kids showed more poise, and you and I talked about it at halftime. We showed poise down the stretch. When they get back within four, the building gets alive for the famous, famous, uh, uh, you know, David Goliath thing, and uh, uh, our kids stepped up, and I'm, more, I'm really proud of them. On Amuka Okafer, you have a one-man SWAT team, 12 points, 15 boards, five blocks. How were you really able to capitalize on Hampton's lack of size? I mean, it's just all about opportunity. I, see, I saw that um, they were lacking size in the post, and I just try to take advantage. I'm just glad I can say Amuka Okafer, and on that note, we'll send it back to you, Greg. All right, Bonnie, thank you. The UConn Huskies move on to play on Sunday with a 78-67 victory. They will meet North Carolina State. The Wolfpack knocks off the 10th seed Spartans of Michigan State, 69-58. Watch MSU's Chris Hill, the three-pointer, top of the key. First half comes to a close, and the Spartans led 30-18, to but look out. Wolfpack got it going. Here's Archie Miller. He's going to push it up ahead to Julius Hodge. He scores and is fouled. The Wolfpack trail by just one. Then Archie Miller to Hodge again, who sprints ahead of the pack. 50 to 40 Wolfpack. And then NC State's FTM off drives strong to the hoop, hits the layup, put the Wolfpack up 53 40. North Carolina State scored 51 points in the second half and beat Michigan State by a score of 69 to 58. A timeout and back to New York after this.
Welcome back, everyone. Just one note for you. A veteran coach, Jerry Tarkanian, today announced his retirement as head basketball coach at Fresno State. It looks like Tark the Shark is done with his coaching career. Let's remind you what's coming your way here on CBS this evening. Around the 7.30 hour, St. John's and Wisconsin in the east. BU and top seed Cincinnati in the west. SIU and Texas Tech in the east. McNeese State plays third seed Mississippi State. And later on tonight, Ole Miss meets UCLA. Siena against top seed Maryland in the east. Georgia and Murray State, Boston College, and the sixth-ranked Texas Longhorns. One game in action right now, that one taking place in Chicago. 7-13 to play in the second half, and Illinois having its way with the Aztecs of San Diego State. Let's take you there live and join Tim Brando and Eddie Fogler. Brando along with uh, Eddie Fogler. It's great to have you. A little NCAA tournament heritage last year, regional final. Corey Bradford had six three-pointers. This one to get to within three. With four players in double figures, Arizona was just too tough. They won at 87-81. Lauren Woods lived at the line, and Luke got to cut down the nets. But, uh, Lucas Johnson there with uh, Wayne McLean, Sergio's dad, discussing these guys are playing with a purpose and a sense and understanding that they've got another chance. And once you've gone that far, Eddie, uh, there's a willingness and an understanding of what you have to do to get back. Well, some teams feel like they're lucky just to get in the tournament. That's their season. Illinois, obviously, is the other situation. They've been there. They've almost made the Final Four. They want it badly, and they've got a shot at it the way they're playing here today. One of the more amazing aspects of uh, that tournament heritage is uh, Michael Wright, Gilbert Arenas, Richard Jefferson, Jason Gardner, Lauren Woods, and of that entire group, only one of them back. And yet, there they are again. Lute Olsen has done an incredible job. Six freshmen and three juniors on this basketball team this year at Arizona, and he's got them as a three seed. Uh, look at Nick Smith, and he brings back some memories, at least facially, of old Chuck Neville. Remember that name? Seven foot four, uh -huh. seven six, actually, NC State. <laughs> By the way, you and I go back yeah, we ways do. away. We can remember see, recall names. See, being old in a blowout helps. <laughs> You remember more things. I want to check your grades. Were you, were you, were you, were you as good at remembering history? No, no. <laughs> There's a three pointer for Bland. Well, a sense of history is certainly something that can be applied to this profession, no doubt about that. Alley oop for Smith. Well, there's a moment for the big Floridian. I'm glad he didn't pass that. <laughs> <laughs> and the veteran talent is. Uh, giving him a standing ovation. Throw it up to the big fella, don't pass it, dunk it. Jarrence Howard with the alley-oop for the seven foot two inch Smith. He can almost dunk it on his tiptoes, Tim. <laughs> There's Kropolia. Boy, he missed that one from point blank range. Fox with a run out, he's got numbers four on two. Hovacic not there. Long rebound, Jarrett Howard again. Everything going Illinois' way, just over two to play. And it's nice to see as a coach the second group and some of the third group getting some minutes and watching the first group on the bench cheer their teammates on. Well, Walton kept that one alive for Bland. In traffic, Smith comes falling down. Rebound cleared by Roger Powell. Freshman from Joliet, Illinois. Kripal, was looking to find his man on the wing, Brandon Ferguson, but could not. Landon not in position to bring it, bring it in. Our South bracket first round. You see Duke advancing to take on Notre Dame, and of course, Indiana against UNC Wilming. Until today, the UNC Wilmington story was the biggest of this tournament. Kent State against Alabama, California, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh a winner in the pod factor at home today for that team that I think will amaze a lot of folks in the tournament. I mean, the Pittsburgh story is an incredible one, and they're another team that's been flying in under the radar. Fox is, by the way, has a season-high 27 after that bucket for the Aztecs. Great hands, what a catch. It was rejected but fouled in so doing. Tim, you can't teach hands. You're born with hands. You cannot teach a, a young player to catch. Watch this catch. Then, uh, then he turns and good drop step fifth. gets it to the basket. Now 7-2 with hands like that, he's got a future. 
And Walton makes his exit. You see some of the emotion on the Aztec sideline, and the flip side is happy, as usual. I'll tell you what, for San Diego State, the building blocks of success certainly been put in place over this period. And for these young men, they are the foundation of the future. I, I think of Myron Epps, a young man who came in Never thought he'd win more than nine games as a collegiate star. I mean, he was a, he was the go-to guy on a club that had not won nine games. Well, Coach Fisher has done a very good job rebuilding this program quickly, much more quickly than I think anybody at San Diego State would ever imagine. The question now is, can he build on this season with recruiting? Recruiting is essential. That's what wins basketball games many times. And hopefully this exposure here and throughout their year will get them better players as they move forward. Gets uh, Ben Wardrop into the game, one of the walk-ons, a little playing time. Uh -huh. And Propolio all over the glass. Eric Sanders the follow. Only four players have scored for San Diego State today. Out of bounds, it belongs to the Aztecs. Fox has 27, Bland, McHale, and Holcomb. That's been it in the scoring column for them. Here's Compaglia getting off, tipping the ball, getting knocked down. Everything going right for the Illini here today. Ooping for Sanders over Smith. And it won't fall. Propaglia the outlet. Oh, behind the back he goes. A little French pastry, as our old pal Al McGuire used to say. Rapal, you can't hit the three. Howard's pass is out of bounds. It will be controlled to San Diego State. You know, I'm looking at Steve Fisher. He's got sort of that David Letterman hair working. <laughs> what is that about Steve? Steve wants a shower, quite oh. honestly. Uh, but congratulations to Steve Fisher before we go here. An outstanding year yeah. at San Diego State and a marvelous job in rebuilding their program. Yeah, I'm really happy for him. He seems to be really enjoying life and the business of coaching a lot more than I've ever seen him. And for Illinois, an exclamation point to a first round win. All but those Creighton Blue Jays waiting in the wings. Final score 93 64. The Illini move on to take on Creighton on Sunday. Frank Williams, a very big day for his coach Bill Self. As we look at the bracket in the Midwest region, Creighton, the 12 seed, the third for the first time ever advancing in the NCAA tournament since we went to 64 teams. They'll take on Illinois on Sunday. And our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Al Fox, 9 of 16, he hit five three-pointers. And Frank Williams, 25-8 on 9 of 13 shooting. For Eddie Fogler and for Charles Davis, Tim Brando, so long from Chicago. Let's take you back to New York, Studio 43, and a very busy Greg Gumbel. Tim Brando, thank you very much. So fourth seeded Illinois moves on to Sunday action with a 93 to 64 win over San Diego State. Are we finished for the day? Hardly. Two more rounds coming your way around 730 Eastern time tonight. St. John's Wisconsin in the east. Top seed Cincinnati in action in the west against Boston University. Texas Tech and Southern Illinois in the east and in the Midwest. McNeese State and Mississippi State. And then a bit later on around 10 p.m. Eastern time. Ole Miss UCLA. Top seed Maryland takes on Siena. Georgia meets Murray State and in the Midwest Boston College against the University of Texas. There's a fair amount of excitement in store for us later on tonight. I would certainly think so. Now we talked about it at the top of the day that we felt like there wouldn't be as many surprises in those first two segments of games. Well, we're sure there's going to be some surprises in this evening games. I just can't tell you right now where they'll be. We'll do that at but you're 7.30. Sure. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I appreciate that. <laughs> we thank you for joining us. Remember, we'll see you again prime time, 7.30 Eastern time for Clark, for all of us here at CBS Sports. Thanks for being with you. We'll see you in a little bit.